All right, our next project is digital painting. And as usual, under assignment sheets, you'll find a breakdown of it, but also off of our homepage, if you go to links, you'll find a handout near the bottom, the digital coloring and painting handout. And it has digital coloring here, what we were used to with creating vector line work and then doing flat color behind, duotone color, full spectrum color, color holds, and even separating into CMYK dots. How is digital painting different? Well, with digital painting, you don't work under an outline, right? You can sketch, you can sketch with lines first, but usually with a soft edged kind of brush, and I'll show you how to customize a brush. Or you can even just sketch with shapes, right? And then you build your values and your colors on top of that. And you, you layer them and you clean them up and you use hard edges and soft edges to give you the illusion you want. Now, these are both very representational, trying to match reality types of digital painting tutorials, right? Both pretty simple, but you can see where they are similar to digital coloring in that you start with kind of local flat colors and then you build up duotones, hard edge, soft edge, and then you just build subtlety within that and get you start adding more and more detail, more and more texture. And you work, the rule is always work general to specific. Try to use big brushes, cover a large amount of space, and then as you work in, you get more and more detail. So for instance, in doing a portrait, you don't start by draw, painting the eye perfectly and then work your way out. Now, the types of finishes do not always have to be representational and photorealistic. You can go for a representational style based on your photo reference. This is the author, James Joyce. Um, but you might choose more expressive colors, more expressive brushes. It's, it has a lot of personality. There's no way to make a digital painting just devoid of your individual personality. But other approaches I like is you don't need to match reality. You can abstract, stylize, caricature, experiment. And so, and even kind of bring those different approaches together. And you're allowed to do any of those for your digital painting, whether you're doing a portrait or whether you're doing an animal. So we'll keep that in mind. Now what I'm going to do are some portraits inspired by that James Joyce portrait. And I first found references, so I'm going to open these references up in Photoshop. One is the Countess Constance Markiewicz, who is a, kind of a political revolutionary and feminist and suffragette in Ireland. And that's an old reference that I sketched from, so I want that. But then I might also want like an interesting color script reference. And I was thinking for her, I wanted kind of early modernism. And this is a Hans Hoffmann painting, right? So my painting that I'm envisioning is kind of an abstract combination of this and this, right? And digital painting can do that, right? Next. I'm going to do George Bernard Shaw. And the reference I'm using that I sketched from is here. Right, again, just black and white, not that interesting. And then the color script I was really interested in was something more unusual and watercolor-like, like this. So I'm gonna use that as my color script for George Bernard Shaw. And then the last one, Oscar Wilde. I'm trying to show you some very different approaches. And this is the reference. Again, it's a black and white photograph, but it was colorized. But it's not like those colors are adequate for a painting. And then the color script I want of the different kind of experiments I found I like this one. It's a little too bold, maybe, and maybe too similar to the Hans Hoffman. So maybe this one will be more subtle. And this is a Toulouse-Lautrec drawing, actually a Toulouse-Lautrec drawing of Vincent van Gogh. 
Another one I liked, color script. I might need multiples. This one's really moody and romantic. All right. So I've got a lot of references there. How can I sort them all and use them all? Well, I can say window, arrange, and I'm going to do the largest kind of multi-panel I can, which is six things showing at a time. And then the first one, it will show me what uh, alternates I want. And I can use my move tool to kind of arrange these. Ah. And I can use my navigator to kind of frame it and shrink it. Navigator is going to be very helpful in digital painting. So I'm going to shrink this one so it fits on. This one's actually pretty good as is. This one I'm going to move over so it looks more like him. And then I'm missing the countenance. So I'm going to move that one into this one. They don't need that yet. And enlarge on her. All right, so those are some nice references I have. All right. Now, how can I start painting these or drawing these? Well, I've already started sketching. I sketched them in my sketchbook. So let's start with, I guess, uh, George Bernard Shaw. So I'm going to open up the scan of my sketchbook in Photoshop. And I'm going to pull this out floating on top of everything. All right. So I've got my reference behind, and I can paint on a panel in front in Photoshop. OK, I've already given him a little bit of personality and sketchiness, but I'm going to make a duplicate of that. And what I love about digital is I can use the warp tool, and I can improve upon it, kind of stretch this paper in slightly different ways. Because I want a caricature, but I also want, want to get kind of the soul of who the person is. I think I shortchanged his, his dome up there. So I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. I made it as a duplicate so I could always compare. And yes, I do like that more. In fact, I'm going to keep going a little bit. Squish him down a bit. And I like doing portraits of dead people. They can't complain. Okay, now I'm trying to keep in mind that structure of the face, right? That there are, this is always just kind of a, a nice check you can do. You want to make sure that there is a line running down the middle of their face. You know what angle their head is at. There's a line going through their eyes that should be about halfway from the top to bottom. The nose is about halfway there, so his chin's about there. The mouth is one-third down from there. The chin line is one-third down from there. The brow line is one-third up from the eye line, and the, an average standard hairline is there. So his hairline is receded back to here, really to the very top of his cranium. And the ear should fit between the eye and the nose line, but if they're older, it will go beyond both, as it does here. So that's a little reality check to make sure that he'll look human, to show you what the skull would look like for him with the zygomatic arch there, the cranium there. Everyone has a skull and a jaw and teeth. So this template only works for people with adult teeth. Right. But that's the skull going on for George Bernard Shaw that I'm working with. So I might keep that as my template outline in case I go too crazy with my painting. All right, it can also inform his zygomatic arch should come up and over a little bit on that side. So let me do that. Tuck it in, make sure everything makes sense. And the ear should drop a little bit. And so even though I have the energy of my sketch, I don't want to have mistakes in anatomy 
that really bug me at the end. There we go. And that, is that better than my original? It certainly is. So just a little bit of warping and um, targeted arrangement. All right, now, what do I do to start painting it? Well, I'm gonna use the color script here, and I am going to start with my speed painting. And this is really my base coat, so I'll call this my uh, base colors. And to do that, I use a brush. Now, I need to show you how to customize a brush. I'm using one I customized earlier. And you see how it works? It's like kind of like a pastel. Works very well, especially at a slightly lower opacity. So this is how you make a brush. Go to File, New in Photoshop, and set up a new file that is 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. So 1,000 pixels wide, a one with three zeros, 1,000 pixels tall. Doesn't matter what resolution, because we're doing it by pixels. Click on the default foreground color box, so it's black on top of white. And then just use any weird brush you want, even just your most standard brush, and start creating a somewhat round, textured, you can leave quite a bit of openness in it, that's okay. Sponge painting. And I should be doing it at 100%. It'll give me the most versatility in doing options for this brush. Okay, I like to imply some directionality with my brush designs, but you can try something else. You can just have it splatter. You can find lots of brush designs that you can import in online. They're called ABR files. But it's not so much the brush design that matters. It's how you customize it and how you use it. And then I'll make it a little bit heavier towards the middle here. But I'm making this brush with a custom brush. All right, so there's the brush. Now what do I do? I say edit, define brush preset. And I'm gonna call this, I always put my name in them, Carl Portrait Brush Test. And because I painted it within a 1,000 pixel square, the brush itself is 876 pixels wide. But that doesn't mean you can't make it bigger if you want to, right? But that's just its default size. So now it's right at the bottom there, automatically selecting it. So now I can turn that off. I don't need to save it. And I can use this brush. But if I use it this way, it looks very mechanical. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sketch and I'm going to make it the size I actually want to print it at. So I go to my image size, and this is 7 by 8 inches by 400. Let's make that even a little bit bigger. I like to do around 11 by 14. And instead of 350, well, let's do, let's go for broke, 16 by 20, basically. Almost 16 by 20 by 350. So this is really going to soften my sketch. But because I haven't done any of my digital painting yet, I want to make sure that that, that that digital painting is at the resolution that I want to print. Because that's what's going to remain. I can shrink it down a little bit. If I really zoom in, you can see how it softened my sketch, but that's just fine. That's just my guiding sketch. All right, now I can test out my brush. And if I use it at full 800, way too big. So let's shrink it down. I like to use a brush that's about the size of a pencil eraser. Right? But the problem is this is a very boring, static brush, even though if I just hit it once, it's really interesting. So now I have to customize it. So I go to Window, Brush Settings. And the first setting I always play with is Shape Dynamics, so click on that. And the first 
item of control because I'm using a tablet. You don't want to do a digital painting without a tablet. I'm going to change.